Today I'm starting off with Mill Street Brewery's Draft Style Vanilla Porter. Beer with natural vanilla extract from Mill Street Brewing in Toronto. Our generous use of natural vanilla extract gives this classic porter a deep complex flavor that you won't soon forget. So today I'm going to be doing a teardown of this battery charger. Now this is more or less an automotive battery charger, except for it's a 24 volt battery charger. So this is used typically with the uh, batteries on larger diesel engines, either in semi trucks and stuff like that. Or in, uh, in this case, it used to be mounted onto the side of a backup generator, a stationary diesel generator. So this one is an Interwatt uh, EWC24-124, 24 volts, 1 slash 2 slash 4 amps charging current. And it can do various different chemistries. It can do either a calcium pure lead or an uh, AGM and wet cell. Um, was it uh, something glass matte, I think, or a gel cell. Um, you can either put it in conditioning mode or equalization mode. Equalization mode basically boosts the output voltage a little bit to try and get each cell voltage um, a little bit more equal to the others. And then, of course, you can uh, set the charging current to uh, 1, 2, or 4 amps. Um, if I remember correctly, this one was just left on a one amp trickle charge on the batteries to start the generator. Um, but like I said it failed and the diesel mechanic just replaced it. So I grabbed it, see if I can see what goes on inside it just for curiosity, see if there's anything obvious broken in it. Should be fun. Should be good to satisfy my curiosity. So this battery charger is far from obsolete. It's still a current listed item. Uh, it sells for $115 Canadian plus tax plus shipping and all that good stuff. So before I start, uh, just to see if it even works, I'm going to have to put some connectors on it. Um, as I guess when the mechanic was pulling it out, he wasn't wasting any time and he just chopped the wires short. So this will be the AC input, 120 volts, 60 hertz, 2 amp max. And this will be the DC output, 24 volts at 1 or 2 or 4 amps. So since this is just a two-wire input cable, the whole thing is double insulated, so it didn't need to uh, have a ground. I will just put, eek, put this two-wire cable on it with some of these handy-dandy little wiggle connectors. I'm really getting to like these things. I wish they were more common in North American usage. I've only really seen them in some imported pieces of equipment. Okay, that took a bit more time than I thought, but uh, I've got my tests set up here. Um, the kilowatt clone over here. This guy, I've got a meter connected onto the DC side. Let's see what happens when you plug it in. It's drawing 3.8 watts. It's not putting any voltage out. Possibly because it's open circuit. Possibly because it's not working. Let's try different modes. An equalization mode now, nothing. Okay. Different battery modes. Nope. Nothing. So it's only drawing enough current, basically, 2 watts. 49 milliamps, 50 milliamps. That's basically just those LEDs. Okay, well, I guess that's why it uh, was taken out of service. So I'm guessing that underneath these feet is where there's some screws. Yeah, there's some Phillips screws down there. All right. Okay. Let's claim show apart. Sure. We don't need that tie wrap on there anymore. Oh, that's a uh, fairly beefy tracks on there, which I guess makes sense given this thing's job. Just tip that right out. Okay, the little control panel thing 
is on the connector, which pops out fairly easily. Hmm. There's one chip and I guess a double-sided board, or actually no, a single-sided board. Hmm. Let's uh, pop that guy out. I guess I should probably deal with those two little screws down there first. Screws and clips holding this board in. Interesting. So, okay, on this side, we've got three little tactile switches and four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten LEDs. Just surf. Oh, and these two up here, a dozen LEDs or, or thereabouts. Okay, so what is that chip? 74HC595. Gee, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? Who else was yelling at their screen that this is the good old uh, HC5, 74HC595 8-bit shift register? Yep, the same one that comes in just about every uh, Arduino starter kit. There it is, just a serial data in and a clock in, uh, a selection of clocks and an enable. Um, but you can get away with just the clock and the data, and that'll give you eight outputs from your Arduino. Very, very handy. And there's the table, a serial data bit comes in, um, first clock pulse puts it to the first output, second clock pulse moves it along, clock pulse, clock pulse all the way along. Yeah, um, pretty standard little chip and really handy for a bunch of different applications. A good chip to know about. Okay, so that was the side uh, project. Let's get into the main meat of her here. Actually, would it be so obvious as just the fuse? Nah, couldn't be. Nope, fuse is not blown. Okay, so that's, uh, that's always the first thing you want to check, isn't it? That's the output fuse. Is there an input fuse? Oh no. Even if there is an input fuse, we know it's not blown because the display board had power coming to it. So it's at least got a five volt power supply. So what do we have here? AC power coming in. There's a fuse there. Four amp, 250 volts. There is a suppression capacitor by the looks of it. There is a suppression choke, thermistor for inrush, um, and another capacitor, a uh, class Y2 capacitor. Ah, yeah, there we go. This first one is a class X2 capacitor here. That's a class Y capacitor there, another choke. Then we go to the full bridge rectifier. No, I'm not going to say it like, uh, like Electro Boom. I'm just not as cool as him with some really chunky diodes. Then we have a 220 microfarad uh, smoothing capacitor after that. And then Q1 on here, which, uh, can I read that? G20N50C, it is a big power MOSFET up to what's 80 amps no let's drain a uh, continuous 20 amp drain okay that's more than enough for the circuit that it's in certainly so what is that mosfet doing in that part of the circuit do you suppose ah there we go little eight pin chip completely anonymous little eight pin chip that looks for all the world like a switching power supply controller doesn't it just the way it's all configured there. I'm going to say that's exactly what's going on. So switching power supply chip there, driving a MOSFET, which is chopping up the DC from these diodes, feeding it through this isolation transformer. Note the isolation, big wide gap. The only thing that's bridging the gap is there and there. And this is two capacitors in series with a little island between them these guys are class y2 capacitors both of them and the other thing 
that is bridging the gap is this little four pin device over here. What do we know that comes in four pin dip style packages? That is going to be an opto isolator, isn't it? Of course it is. What else would it be? Just over here on the diode, on the LED side of it, we have a Zener diode and just a rectifier, regular diode and a capacitor there. A couple more capacitor, a couple more resistors, diodes hanging around over there. Yeah. So this is just classic switch mode power supply stuff. So that's the high voltage side. There's the isolation. Now we're on the low voltage side over here. We have two devices here and here on 220 packages, TO220 packages, mark D10 and D something else. They are clearly going to be diodes. They will be rectifying what's coming out of here. Then there's their filtering capacitors. Then there's an inductor in series to knock down high frequency stuff. Another inductor. What's underneath that little blob of elastic there? Maybe that's just holding. Could be, I don't see any component under it. Okay. Over here we have a transistor, which is probably doing current limiting Q3, Q5. TIP 42C. It's just a normal PNP transistor. Okay. Capable of six amps. Reasonable enough. It's on a solid heat sink, so it should be able to do all of that. So yeah, that will be uh, probably doing the current limiting uh, for the charging current. So the current sensing is most likely being done across this big resistor here, right at the output. It's kind of difficult to measure them in circuit, but it's it's measuring in the one ohm range, so that's probably not unreasonable. Less than an ohm, because I've got half an ohm in my probes. So that's probably what that guy is up to. Um, and, of course, reporting that back to the microcontroller down there. Which, again, is an anonymous little microcontroller type thing, I'm guessing. Yeah, so it's it's got several tracks going over to that header pin which is there, which goes up to our little control panel board that we saw earlier. So let's get a little bit dangerous here. So first thing to look at, here's the capacitor after the bridge rectifier on the DC, on the low, uh, or the high voltage side rather. 168 and a half volts, close enough to 170 volts. That is what you'd expect out of rectified mains voltage. Uh, so then we go through Mr. MOSFET and we go to the primary of the transformer. It's both isolation and step down. Uh, and here we have the AC coming out of that transformer. Let's measure it in AC volts mode. Five volts, 4.9 volts. I don't think so, but... That's probably going to be a higher frequency than this cheap little meter is capable of. Let's try a slightly less cheap, cheap little meter. No, it's not picking it up either. Okay, time to break out the big guns. So we'll go, since this is isolated, it's completely isolated from the mains. I can put the ground side of my pro, my uh, scope probe onto just about anything over here. It should be safe. So if we put our probe across that uh, transformer, across the secondary of that transformer, we've got these oddball little pulses here. We'll just do a quick measurement of those guys. Those are near enough to 60 hertz. That wasn't what I was expecting. Let's just zoom in on these pulses a little bit. Oh, hello. That's more the kind of frequency I was expecting. Let's go there. Yeah, 62 kilohertz, 61 kilohertz, something in that range. So you can see the square wave happening there. Um, and then a bunch of harmonic uh, stuff. Let's just brighten that up a bit. You can see all the various different harmonics and stuff happening in there. That's just, uh, square waves are just naturally noisy like that, um, which is why you want all kinds of filtering in this power supply, clearly. 
but I would have expected there to be a lot more consistent, uh, like not just, where, let's just turn the voltage off. No, where's the, yeah, times, where's the time? Like that pulse is 680 microseconds long. I would have expected this entire thing to be uh, showing me that higher frequency rather than just pulsing like that. So there's clearly something not happy in the control side of this circuit uh, that's not that's not uh, continuing the square wave right across. Okay, well that's a data point. Let's see what else we can see just from that. So here we have there's the uh, the two main secondary windings and there's a couple of smaller ones. So it looks like this winding is providing uh, the power supply, the five volt power supply, I'm guessing. This is all going over into this stuff here. And down in here, just chasing the circuitry around, this guy appears to be a five volt regulator. So that's where our five volts is coming from. And if I trace those around properly, yeah. There's our five volts. So that's that little regulator in there. Okay, so that's where the five volts is coming from to power this little microprocessor over here and the shift register there. So that's, that makes a certain amount of sense. So is there anything left that I haven't talked about over here? Oh, still got some voltages to measure, I guess. Even though we know we're not getting the proper voltage coming out of here because it's just a super low duty cycle and it's not providing enough oomph to do anything, we still have a certain amount of power coming out. So here is these two diodes uh, there and there. Um, they are in common and come on. So yeah, they're not capable of sustaining a proper voltage, but it is going up to 35 volts occasionally, but they're just not able to sustain a proper voltage because they're not getting enough input feed. So I'm going to guess that either this microcontroller or this switch mode power supply chip is probably unhappy internally. Um, the microcontroller's may be okay because this little control board over here works properly. Although who knows, uh, one of its current sense input might be smacked or its voltage input might be, uh, or voltage sensing input might be damaged or something like that. It's, it's so hard to tell because these are both very anonymous chips and we can guess at what they are for just from what they're doing, but who knows what their actual part number is. I'm going to unplug that before I get too carried away in here. I should just have this visible to make sure that everybody knows that I'm not being stupidly risky. But yeah, I, I don't know that there's much else to be learned in here, but that's okay. I, uh, I grabbed this not so much to try and repair it as just to do the teardown. Although if there was an obvious problem, like the fuse or something, then I clearly would have just replaced that. But so that was an interesting uh, little, little power supply to dive into. And I'm guessing that the majority of the power components are still good. So things to salvage out of there, possibly. Um, inductors are always a handy thing to have. Fuse, capacitors, sure. Some nice big chonky diodes to play with. I will add this to the scrap bin of salvage. But I think that's about all we can learn out of this thing tonight. That was a interesting little exploration. I kind of wondered what was going on inside one of these things and now I know. Thanks for joining me on my little curiosity teardown. Um, if you have any questions or comments down in the comment section as usual. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later.